Guitar practice session 10, 21, 24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap. Hoping the practice sessions help me to generate a routine, verbalize what I'm trying to learn so I can get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others, learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things that I'm trying to be learning here, I do think that trying to present the information, even if no one's listening, is useful because it helps to verbalize the information that you might not otherwise do in a way you might not otherwise do. And therefore, if you want to take these resources and make your own practice sessions, we'll try to provide them for you. Don't worry about plagiarism if you want to take a look at them and adjust them or do whatever you want. We have the Excel worksheet here. I've added another tab so that we can focus in on uh, the 11th remember in the excel worksheet is orientated from our playing perspective from behind the guitar where we have the low string or the heavy string the one closest to the ceiling on top top to bottom left to right in a similar orientation from our perspective from behind the guitar i will flip my guitar around so it looks like i'm left-handed so once again you can see what i'm doing from kind of your perspective from a playing perspective which should also hopefully line up to the worksheet so we can put all of our time focusing in on the 11th here so the main the overall project that i'm trying to kind of get in my mind is I would like to be able to play in any mode by basically using the major key as our kind of Rosetta Stone so that I can refer back to it as our, our point of reference as I go to other modes. In order to do that, I need to know the relative positions in the major key, the one through seven, and then I can then build my chord constructions in terms of major or minor chords, knowing that the one, four, five are major, the two, three, and six are minor, and then the seven is that diminished or the Locrian, that gives me the third in relation to the major scale. If I go to any other scale, like the related Dorian or Phrygian or something like that, then I need to be able to reorientate myself in some way to the major scale if I've memorized that the 145, for example, are major so that I can play those other modes and still be able to convert the notes into either a major chord or a minor chord. Now, beyond that, I would like to be able to learn not just the 135, but also the 7, 9, 11, and 13 to be able to add those uh, intervals. In order to understand that, then I think the most comprehensive way is to understand the related chords as basically modally related chords. So in other words, I need to know if I'm playing the one, the four, or the five, not just whether it's a major uh, chord, because that will tell me if I can play the seven, nine, or 11, and 13 that are going to be appropriate or are in the same key. So in other words, all I need to know is the one, four, five are major chord constructions to know that I play a major third as opposed to a minor third for a three note triad, but it's not enough information to know whether I add what seventh I'm going to add or nine or 11 or 13 uh, per se. So there are some shortcuts to that that we'll kind of discuss on uh, a little bit on how you might kind of chunk these intervals together so you can learn the shapes because the idea would be I would like to be able to learn the shapes just like we do with the one, three, five, and then say, I can always add, you know, this shape, the seven, nine, 11, and 13 with the same shape, the same pattern. But I have to know that I can't just do it on the one, four, five. I have to do it in alignment to the related modes. Otherwise, I learn all these shapes and I don't know when it's applicable. That's my problem that I've always kind of been frustrated with. People tell you, hey, this is how you play with throwing an 11 in there. I'm throwing a nine in there. I'm throwing in a 13, a seven, and so on. But when is it appropriate to do that? Is that in the same key that you're playing in? Are you playing? Are you adding a note that is outside the key that you're in? That's the kind of questions that are you know interesting to me from just like a patterns uh, perspective. So given that, we're gonna be focusing in on the 11, looking at that shape, which is going to be lined up and we'll talk about which modes it's going to be lined up for noting that the 11 is equivalent to the fourth and we talk about why that is the case a little bit uh, in more detail 
And then our goal is to be able to look at any note on the fretboard. And if we say that that note is our root note, I would like to be able to find the interval of the major 11th interval to help me build my chords, for example, and also just to know the interval, which is equivalent to a five note away uh, perfect fourth. And if I can do that, the way the strategy to do that is to say, I'm going to pick a root note on each of the six strings and then find every other, every position that I can play the 11th from, which means there's only going to be one 11th on each string if I'm talking about the first through 12 frets because there's only one note in each fret. So if I start on the A as my root, there's going to be a 11th here on this string, an 11th on this string, an 11th on this string, 11th here, 11th here, and 11th here. So there is a finite number that is comprehensible. It's not like it's, you know, there's 11th, you just randomly everywhere. We can systematically kind of break it out to each string and then go to the next string down, possibly looking at like this B, for example, and then looking at Above it, there's an 11 on this string, 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 and look at the related shapes in order to pick that up, which we already know to some degree because in prior weeks, we've been working on these intervals and we're looking here at a five note away perfect fourth interval. The difference is the five note away perfect fourth, we usually think of kind of right next to where we're working. Now I'm trying to find every one which means we might be going more than one octave away or outside of the normal shapes that we would be working on before. That's why it's going to be a little bit more comprehensive to think about it this way. Now, as we do that, I'll also say if I grab, for example, a, a, uh, a note here, which is my fourth or my 11th, what thirds do I have? What fifths do I have? that I might be able to make a chord from. How can I use that from a chord construction, which we typically think of having the one, three, five, and then we can add to it like the 11. Noting that if I am building chords, sometimes I can't grab the one, three, five, and the 11, but I want the 11. What should I drop then? I will drop the five first, because it's usually the one that doesn't give as much character to the note. And then if I, if, I, if I can't do that, I'll drop the third. And so that's how we'll build it. So we might have a three. We could try to get all four notes in there. Or I can try to say I want the 11 and see what, what do I have to drop in order to get my fingering position to still be able to pick up at least the one and the 11. And then see if I can pick up the, either the five or the three. Preferably the three if possible because it's the one that gives the flavor. And if not, then uh, the five. That's the general process. I tell a joke in there somewhere. It's not too political, but it's kind of political because it's about the mainstream media, which I think they're totally political. So if you want to skip the joke, uh, skip the joke. Uh, don't don't get offended. You could still work on the on the, on on the guitar. But I st I thought it was kind of funny. Maybe it wasn't fun. I don't know. It's tasteless. Tasteless. Anyway, and then uh, and then I just jam a little bit in the key of A at the end. Not too inspired. Uh, I was messing with just like I mean, just the rhythm uh, more than the notes. Continuing with our project, at this time looking at the 11. Basically, we're looking at the intervals, being able to finger the intervals that we can use to construct chords with. When we construct a chord, we first think about the base of the chord, which is usually the triad, whether it be a major triad or a minor triad. The way we build the chords is we take the scale and we basically take every other note. Therefore, the basic triad is gonna have a one, not the two, but the three, not the four, but the five. And if it was a major triad, that third will be a four note away major third. If it were a minor triad that would be built, you can imagine from a minor scale, which we could just think of as the Aeolian mode. So here's the Aeolian or minor scale in essence in terms of skipping every other note that we can construct from using this worksheet. In that case, in relation to that root note, we would have a three note away minor third. So then we can continue and go to the seventh, noting that the seventh is typically going to be the last note in any scale because we usually take the 12 notes and bring it down, break it down into a seven note scale. So then we have these up here, the nine, 11, and the 13, noting that those don't represent actual uh, notes in the scale in terms of our relative positions 
because there's only seven of them. What they really represent is basically, you can think of them as the even numbers that we skipped. So if we went around in a circle and we skipped every other note and we go from seven to nine around the circle will actually take us to the two. Now, if you were on a piano, you'd say, well, it's an octave up, right? So it's an octave up. So we're still skipping every other note to spread everything out nicely and make a, a nice sound thusly. But on the guitar, we're typically gonna grab whatever we can grab. So I'm gonna think of the nine in essence as equivalent to the two. I'm gonna think of the 11 as in essence equivalent to the four and the 13 as in essence equivalent to the six. Now I've been learning my intervals over here in relation to the scales that we have looked at where the intervals are gonna be named based on the relative position uh, of the scale there's not a nine. In other words, I'm not learning an interval of the ninth interval because there's no nine in our scale here. So we have to, in order to convert the nine, in this case, the 11, to the intervals that we're learning over here that we've put together, we have to say, okay, well, the 11 is equivalent to the four. And if I'm looking at the four, then we're typically gonna have a five note away perfect fourth, right? So this is what this means. I'm gonna say it's a perfect fourth. It's a five note away, perfect fourth. So that's that's what we're looking at here. So we're looking at the 11. I'm thinking of the 11 as the equivalent to the fourth. I'm looking at the distance <clears throat> then in terms of half steps would be equivalent to a perfect fourth in a major scale. And that would be five half steps away from whatever the root is. So that's gonna be uh, the general idea also just want to reiterate the idea that when we think of the triad we usually have it drilled in our mind that we have a major triad and a minor triad and then we kind of memorize that the third is going to be the differentiating differentiating factor but when we get to the 7 9 11 and 13 that's not really the case which is why we kind of need to know the related modes because the related modes are going to be the thing that tells us uh, wh what kind of interval we're talking about when we get to the 7, 9, 11, and 13. So there's some kind of shortcuts that you can kind of use as well uh, that might help for the memorization rather than memorizing all the modes. But ultimately, the modes would be the best thing to do because that gives you everything, right? So how would you memorize the modes? You, we've been going through it. I've been trying to memorize them by first thinking about the Ionian mode and looking at the relative positions, the intervals for the Ionian mode, which is the major scale. And then once I know those intervals, then I can look, I can learn the minor mode, which is the Aeolian mode. And we, I've been working on those in a, few, in a last week or something like that. And that will help me uh, learn the, the intervals for the minor modes. And then we have the other modes, which we can classify as either major modes or minor modes. And we can do that by where they lie in relation to the major scale. Because a lot of people learn that you would build a major chord off of the one, four, five, and a minor chord off the two, three, and six. All that means is that mode that we're talking in has either a minor third or a major third in it. So you can, you can use that same process to say, well, if I'm gonna make a minor chord off of the two and the three, those must be minor modes that would be built, which is the Dorian and the Phrygian, which I can compare to the main minor mode, Aeolian, and there's only gonna be one interval difference. And then I could do the same thing for the, the Lydian and the Mixolydian, which are the major chords that we would build, the four and the five, and say there's gonna be one interval difference from the Ionian. And so that sounds like a lot, but if you actually systematically kind of do that, like I've been doing that for a while now, and it's, you know, I'm starting to see, okay, that makes sense, right? So it's doable. However, I also might try to think about how I might chunk things up a little bit more so I can have bigger chunks, which might be easier to memorize. So for example, I might say, okay, if I'm in the major key, which of these ones of possibly the seven, nine, 11, and 13 will be different and which of them will be the same no matter which major mode I play. So first I can look at then the intervals for the, for the major or Ionian scale. We have a perfect first, two note away major second, four note away major third, five note away perfect fourth, seven note away perfect fifth, nine note away major sixth, and 11 note away major seven. 
Then we have the Lydian and Mixolydian, the four and the five. Those are the two major modes that we would build basically a major chord from. So they have the same th uh, third as the related major and fifth as the related major in terms of intervals compared to the, uh, to the first. Now, no, now I want to be thinking which of these are going to be different, the 7, 9, 11, and 13. Now remember, when I look at the Lydian down here, this is basically just the Lydian scale. It's the related scale, but it's in the form of chord constructions where we skip every other note. I do have, by the way, hidden cells up top. So if I unhide these cells and say unhide, there's the 2, 4, and 6. So if I'm looking at Lydian, I can see the whole scale here but it's redundant because this two is equivalent to the nine, the four is equivalent to the 11, and the six is equivalent to the 13 when we're building chords from it. But it's useful to realize that again, I, if I'm building a chord off of the Lydian, I'm basically just making a related Lydian chord, which is gonna have all the same notes as it, as the related Ionian. It's just that I'm putting the D you know, at the front now as the root from which I'm building the intervals from, and then I have to adjust my intervals to be the Lydian, which will still be the same notes. So, so let me hide these again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide the, well, let's think about it this way real quick and say, okay, what's the different interval then for the Lydian? So the Lydian has the fourth that is different. So, so, and I just know that we've, we've talked about that in prior presentations, but if I know the Lydian has the fourth that is different, the fourth is equivalent to the 11. So the fourth and the 11 are the same. So that means that when I'm playing the 11 on the one of a major scale, I have, I, I can play the 11 uh, one way, but when I, when I go to the 11 or fourth of the four note, I'm really playing in the key of Lydian. And when I build the, the, the major scale plus an 11 there, it's gonna have a different interval. That's the problem, right? So I need to know when that's going to happen when I go to the 7, 9, 11. And, and, so, and so let's look at the, the next one, the Mixolydian, which is the different interval. The different interval here is the uh, 7. So it's the 7. So that means that when I build the 7 for the, for the major, if I build a three-note triad plus a 7, I'm going to have a different interval, a different shape than if I build it based on the five, which is basically a Mixolydian chord, because the Mixolydian chord has a different interval for the seventh. Now I could play the same interval, but then I'd be playing, I'd basically be jumping to a different scale, right? I wouldn't be playing in the same key, and that's cool to do, but it's just, you just kind of want to know when that would happen. So if I was to say, if I said here, and this is the same as uh, this is the seven, this is the paste, the 11, and that 11 is the same as the four. So just to kind of think about this, we can say then of these seven, nine, 11, and 13, if I'm looking at the seven then, the seven will be the same interval for the first, the, the first chord, the major chord and it will be the same for the Lydian, but it will be different for the Mixolydian. Uh, what about the nine, which is equivalent to the two? Notice there's no change in the majors. Now the mi it's not the same on the minor because if I go to the minor, then the intervals are not always gonna be on the minor side. So I can't think of it the same way as I think about the one, three, five, where the three is a major third for the major and a minor for the minor. But I might be able to chunk it out a little bit by saying, okay, if I look at the three major modes, which, which of these seven, nine, 11, and 13 will be the same for each and which will be different. And then when I go to the minors, I can do the same thing and say, which of the seven, nine, 11, 13 will be the same as the minor and which will be different, right? So if I go to the nine, just for the majors, the nine's always the same. The nine is equivalent to the two. So if I figure out where that interval is and I add that, I play a three note triad plus the nine, that nine's always good. It's, it's good, it's equivalent to the two and I can play it on, on any of the majors. The minors is a different story, we'll talk about those later. The 11 is equivalent to the four 
and we saw that the 11 is going to be good the same interval on the major as well as the mixolydian but the lydian is going to have that funny one and i, ha I put these in the wrong spot i'm sorry the lydian's going to have these funny ones uh, because it has a different interval on the fourth it has a augmented fourth and then the 13 notice the 13 is equivalent to the six and once again that's not one of the different intervals in the two major modes for the major modes the minors we'll talk about later so we we could say then where am i safe well the seven i play the same shape on the on the one and the th the four or the ionian and the lydian but not the mixolydian on the nine which is equivalent to the two i'm good on the three majors the one four five to add the same interval or shape of a nine and 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 that's equivalent to the to this two and then the 11 i'm going to add the same interval shape on the one and the uh, the five or the Ionian and Mixolydian, but the Lydian will have a different 11. So I have to be careful there. The 11 be equ equivalent to the fourth interval and the 13, I'm good. So when I add the 13, it's going to be the same shape, the same interval for the three majors, the one, four, five, the first mode Ionian, the fourth mode Lydian and the fifth Mixolydian. So that gets, see, that gets a little bit wonky to wrap our minds around. So what I'm, so the project here is that I want to learn all these intervals, the 7, 9, 11, and 13 for the major and then see where the differences lie. And so then we'll move to the Mixolydian and uh, the Lydian and see which of those intervals are different to try to get an, an attempt for us to be able to say, I, I know when I can use the same shapes and when those shapes will be different if I want to play in the same key by going to a chord that is a related modal chord construction, right? And that's the only way to really know that you're playing a chord that's in the same key. And if you want to play a chord that's outside the key, that's great. Then, then what you're probably doing is a parallel construction. That's what's still going to sound cool. That's why the, the blues sounds cool, because now you're saying, I'm going to, I'm going to use that Mixolydian 7, the minor 7, all the way through, which you can kind of think of as though you're playing three different mixolydian you're skipping from mixolydian to mixolydian to mixolydian rather than playing the related one four five of a major because if you were to do that you would have but it sounds cool because it's all parallel everything is parallel it's not in the same key but it's all it's all the shapes are parallel to each other it's symmetrical in that way okay so let's let's go let's do that so i'm going to say now let's just do our shapes hopefully i didn't confuse myself or anybody else too heavily. Let's hide the evens. And then I'm just going to try to find these shapes. My strategy is that I want to be able to I want to be able to find any root note. I should be able to find the related uh, major 11, which is equivalent to the uh, the four, which is going to be a five note away perfect fourth from the root. So we'll start with this A and say, okay, if that's my A on the top string, let's do this again. Okay, so underneath it here, <clears throat> I'm going to have right underneath because the 11th is equivalent to the fourth. And when we were doing our intervals, I know the fourth is right underneath because there's a five note distance between the strings and we have a five note away perfect fourth, which is equivalent to a five note away 11, right? When we think of chord speak versus, you know, interval speak in a, in a scale, same thing. Five notes away could be called the 11 or could be called the perfect fourth. So top to bottom, perfect fourth. The inverse, therefore, from bottom to top is going to be a 12 minus five, otherwise seven note away, perfect fifth. And so the inverse of a perfect fourth is a perfect fifth. Therefore, the inverse of the 11 is going to be a a perfect fifth right the inverse of the 11 if you think about it in chords is the fifth all right so then i can say i could arpeggiate it like just to just to see where what chords i can build from that i could say well there's a third right there so i could i can't play those at the same time but i could arpeggiate like that and 
I could bring in the fifth here. You know, by bringing in this fifth. So I also have this fifth that uh, I can't play at the same time as the fourth, but I can arpeggiate it. I've got a uh, fifth back here, so I could play, like if I had these two, I'd have to reach back to that fifth, that's doable. So that's the one, one, uh, 11, and the five. Then I have an A underneath it. I'd like to get to that third down here. That maybe I can bar those two, but that's gonna get kinda hard. So that's probably doable though. So that would be the one, the 11, the five, the one, and then I'd like to get that third in there. And then if I get that, that if I happen to get this one at the bottom, that's okay, because it's the 13. So that's actually doable. I don't do that much. Maybe I have to play, mess with that more. So, muy interesante. And then I have a third up here. So this would be, normally I would think of this as my A, like, bar shape, like this. A D, you know, an, an, e, min, an e major shape, bar shape. And then, uh, now wait a second. So then if I, if I lift this finger up, where this, then I, that would reveal the D, and then I still have my A that I'm grabbing here. And so that's, we can go from our bar chord back and forth that way, revealing the 11, which is also the five note away perfect fourth. So we have that, and that gives us the third right here. That's cool. So I know about that. And then let's keep it at that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go then to... So that was on this string. So now I want to go to this string. Where is it on this string? The 11. The 11, which is equivalent to a five note away perfect fourth on this string is way back there. Which would be tough to reach if it wasn't an open fret. I can count that out because it's got to be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. So it's a five note away perfect fourth, correct. All right, that makes sense. Not much I can do with that one. So let's leave that, let's go to the next one. This one would be five, 10, 15, 16. Let's do this five, 10, 15, minus 12 to get back, uh, to get back would be uh, five minus two would be seven. Let me do that, five, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which would be three, and then four, five. So that would be here. So the A, so this A to this D. So that's interesting. So that, that distance is gonna be a five note away a uh, perfect fourth, a five note away 11th, or a five note away perfect fourth, however we want to see it. The inverse, therefore, would be 12 minus five, which would be seven, seven note away perfect fifth. And again, if I take my bar chord like this, my major bar chord, and then like I lift up my pinky, and I lift up my pinky from this A and put it down here, that's an easy way I can grab that, but if I do that, I lose the third. So if I was playing my bar chord, I lose the third and grab the five note away, perfect fourth or 11. So here's my bar chord. And then I'm also, as I do that, I'm revealing, if I, well, I'm revealing the G, which shouldn't, I shouldn't play out which is a problem. So I'll try not to play out that G with my bar. Because I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen my knuckle here so I'm not playing that um, D string anyways. So that's interesting to note on that one. That's doable. All right, and then let's go down to the next one.
Uh, it's going to be down here. That would be 5, 10, 15. Let's bring it down. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 3 is 2 plus 5 up here because of the kink in the tuning. 5, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4. Wait a sec. 5, 10, 5, wait a sec. 5, 10, 15. 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 is 3 plus 5, 8 up to here, eight, seven, six, five. That makes sense. Okay, so we're here, boom, boom. Is that right? That, I'm on uh, this D. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that one, what do I have that I can play with that? I have a nice convenient third here so I could go and I could try to bar off I could try to mute the rest with this finger maybe it would be hard to mute that G that way I could mute it like this but more likely I would also want to be playing maybe this fifth and see if I could still grab that. So it's like boom, boom, boom. I play that. And then I still have a finger down here that I can grab that. So I go from a basically an A minor. And then I add that 11. That's doable. Okay, uh, and then let's go over here and say, all right, up here, it'd be uh, equivalent to, by, by the way, on the top string, where would it be on the top string? Five notes away would be here to here. It's almost reachable. So I could arpeggiate that way by going to the one, uh, the one, three, and, and then four, and then five. So I could go one, two, one, three, four, five. One, one, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. Anyway, and then the same D is down here. which is quite a reach. Probably not the most practical. All right, let's go down to the next one down. Otra vez. Let's try to tell a joke here. I'll go early on the joke. I might wear down here. I'm on a D. Okay, this one isn't political, but it's kind of political because it's about, it's got the new, it's got the news media in it and they're obviously political hacks, in my opinion. But so, so you might want to skip it if that will annoy you. I'm going to drink some coffee. All right, here we go. Here's my joke. Practice joke. Practice session joke. My advice to the mainstream of sewage media is to, is to stop the constant lying. Just stop with the lying and concentrate on just trying to be yourself, you know? Just just be yourself right in the face. Be Stinger first, repeatedly, until your face swells up from being yourself so much to the point where you can't talk anymore. And then give thanks to the honeybee Stinger for allowing you to just be yourself. Because the only chance of shutting your dang A up is to be yourself and then see what happens. The good old and simple ABC strategy, you know? And yes, you do need to be yourself in the face, not the butt, in order, in order for the swelling to shut the proper stink hole. However, most of us have been able to air out the stench with, with other news sources at this point. 
So being yourself is more of a self-help strategy for you rather than to help the rest of us. You know, I'm just saying, just trying to be helpful here. Because, I mean, why would anybody drink from the mainstream of sewage when you could when you could find a nice, clean, and honest spring, like upstream somewhere? You know, you don't, you don't, you don't wait. You don't wait until you don't go in the, you don't go in the sewer in order to, to get your drinking water. That's not where you go. You go upstream, you go, you go somewhere else with the, with the stream in it for crying out loud. And so that's my recommendation, but I still, so just be you, just go be yourself. Just go be yourself, man. So now we want to go above the, uh, the D here to find the 11th. So to do that, it's useful to look at the inverse. So I'm looking at the 11th, which is equivalent to a five note away perfect fourth. The inverse is 12 minus uh, five, which is a seven note away perfect fifth. Therefore, the distance between this string and this string I'm looking for is a seven note away perfect fifth, which I could count up and say, okay, there's negative five, I'll call it negative five, six, seven. So there it is. So I'm gonna say from this D to this G, if I go from top to bottom, G to D, that's a seven note away perfect fifth from bottom to top, therefore five note away perfect fourth, otherwise known as a five note away 11th, right? Or major 11. All right, and so there's that. Is there anything else I can, I can add to that? So I have that. I've got a fifth down here, so that's reachable. I could do that. So then I'd have my, there's the 11, the one, and the five. So that's interesting. And then I have a third over here, so I could pick up that one and say, now I have the 11, one, and the three. 11, one, three. That's an interesting sound. So I could maybe alternate between that and the five. There's the five. All right, cool. Movie B to the N. I have a another five down here so i could go from this a to that g to the d and then it's gonna be hard to mute those strings though well i'd have to mute just no not really I'm picking up, I lost the G up here. There's that. While I'm doing that, I could pick up that seven and the three down here. I could bar this off pretty easily. Is that right? That's doable. That's pretty cool. If I pick the one above it up, that would be an E. That would be a nine. I could even pick this one up. Okay. I have to toy with that one. That's a doable thing right there. I don't know. All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to say then, on this string, I have then this one. So there's my five note away perfect fourth or five note away major 11. I can arpeggiate it, of course, by saying there's the one, there's the three, and there's uh, the five. So I could say one, three, five. No, wait. One, three, four, or one, three, eleven, whatever you want to call it. Five, one, three, eleven, five, one, three, four, five. I 
can do almost like a shuffle pattern. Anyway, it's still pretty, pretty reachy. Uh, so then I'm going to say, uh, I could, I could, well, let's keep it there. Let's move on, move on. Don't get stuck in the mire like a, a wildebeest stuck in the tar pit, like an, one of those old elephants stuck in the tar pit. You gotta keep moving, you sink. That's gonna be five note away, perfect fourth, otherwise known as a five note away major 11. I have a G behind it. I have a, a, a third behind it, so I could be like, there's the one three, so one three five, or one three four, one three four, one three four five, and then I could add the five up there if I wanted to, so I could play arpeggiate one three four. That's interesting. What else could I do, yo? Why did you say yo? What do you mean, why did I say yo, yo? I say yo when I feel like saying yo. I'm gonna say, so now I've got the A back there. It's kind of hard not to hit that top string. I could put this one. I could try to grab that third down there by barring again. So now I've got the one, eleven, uh, five, and then I grabbed a seven, and there's my third. Mui B to the N, K Mas, Tango, Aki. We're going to say I could do a third up top. So if I'm on that one, I got boom. This would be like my major, I uh, would be an A shaped bar. And then if I want to tinker with that bar, I could let this one go and just play the two notes down here. So now I've just moved that A-shaped bar so that I could play the same D again. But instead of playing this A, I've revealed now that one, which I might more easily play this way now instead of barring it. So, but I could bar it because then I can move the bar down. So that's cool. All right. All right, let's move on to the next string down. Down here, that would be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Five note away, uh, major 11, or five note away, perfect four, however you want to see it. Bit of a reach, probably not going to be completely useful, but I'm aware of you over there. so. That's cool, as long as I know it's there. Let's go to the next one. This one's gonna be five, 10, and then 15 because of the fault line. And then, wait, five, 10, 15 because of the fault line. Bring it down, 15 minus 12 is five minus two is three, and then four, five. So that makes sense, five note away, five note away. And so five on the eight, and here. Is that right? Five, six, seven, no. That is not right. That sounds better. Five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Alright, what can I do that? Que puedo hacer con esta? Lo 
diré que puedo hacer. I'll tell you what I can do with that. I'll go here, here. So that's a one five. So I've got that bad doggy. And then I could go, like maybe I could go here, grabbing the third. That's a little bit of a different. A little difficult. But if I did that, anyway, let's keep it at that. What else we got? K mas tango. We have this one which is the same as the three up top. So, do So that's interesting because I have the third here, and then I have a fifth back here. And then I could, and then I got my pinky, or my, and then I could still reach down there and grab that one. There's my four, perfect fourth or eleven. So I could be like, here's my D minor. And then I grab that eleven. Which I have to kind of move my finger behind the neck to do. Which I don't like doing because I like to try to mute this one because I'm crazy with my picking. But I can be a little bit more accurate with the picking. Just be like... Muting that one, yeah. Or I can pick the one above it, which would be a D, another D. That's the root. I could pick the root right here and drop the five and just bar these two, like that. So now I'm just saying, drop the five. I don't need you, five. I don't even need you. You're not adding nothing to my sound and then I can do that even while reaching with my thumb no, I can't really reach with the thumb all right that's enough of that whoo all right let's move to the next one Let's find a G. Let's look at that G. G major. G major. That sure is cool. I'm going to go to the... All right, so if I'm on here, once again, I'm going above first, so I need to go to the inverse. So I'm looking at the 11th, which is equivalent to a five note away perfect fourth which has an inverse of 12 minus five, which is a seven note away perfect fifth, which I can count up by saying this is negative five going from here to here, and then six, seven. So if I looked at this shape, that would be the same related position that we saw above from C to G would be a seven note away perfect fifth, and therefore from, from G to C, five note away perfect fourth or five note away 11. All right, move B to the end. Do with that I've got a another I have a five down here so I could be like boom 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 that would be the 11 one five cool and then I have a three over here that's that same position so I have a three back here so now I could be like I could go between those two. So here's the 11, 1, 3 versus the 11, 1, 5. Cool. I like it. I like it a lot. 
Alright. What if I try to get these two? Because I have another fifth down here. Or I could just borrow this. Uh, and pick up, like... But I'm trying to get... Like, if I do that... And then... But I want to get to that D down there. I could just bar this off, obviously. Okay. Moving on. Moving on the ground. Moving on water. Moving on. I'm not even going to specify what I'm moving on. I'm just moving on stuff. We're going to say this is going to be one up here. So I have to go once again, seven notes away. So negative five, negative 10, nine, eight, seven. So that makes sense. So if I go from the C to the G, seven note away, perfect fifth. Therefore from G to C, five note away perfect fourth otherwise known as 11 a major 11 from a chord standpoint all right let's say let's add some action i have a fifth right there so i could be like i'd be like well that's kind of hard to do maybe i can't be like that but i can borrow it got the 11, the 5, and the 1. Okay. And then, uh, okay, cool. I could arpeggiate that B right there. I have another, the third is right there. So I could be like, <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. So now I've got the 11. What? No, that's not right. 11. 11, 1, 3. Ow. That didn't hurt, but it scared me. So I said, ouch. Did that hurt? No, it didn't hurt, but it scared me, and that's why I said, ouch, okay? <laughs> you're not supposed to say, ouch, when you're scared. You, I mean, I did. Okay. Whatever, dude. Let's do this one. On the same string, it's going to be 10. So that's the one we can arpeggiate. Five note away, 11. So I could go dit dit dit. Arpeggi eight. One, four, five. Wait. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. One, three, five. All right. Coolio. Yo. E I E I O. And then right below it, we've got the five note away perfect fourth or five note away 11. Where, of course, that's the shape where I have the third behind it. So I could say one, and then I could arpeggiate it this way one, three, four, five. One, three, four, five. So then I can be like, I could be like, uh, I could be like, why do you have to say that all the time? It's stupid. I'm gonna, that's a doable shape. I can grab.
up another root underneath it. And then what I could do too is I can bring this forward to like here if I wanted to. And there's another B. So now I could do this. Do, do, do. I could bar this. All right. Very interessante. You know what is interessante? An elefante. This is going to be five. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So from here to the C. Oh, wait a second. Bit of a reach because of the kink in the tuning. Pushed it back. But I might still be able to get that 3. So I can grab that three of that B right there, but a little bit less practical due to the further reach because of the fault line. All right, the next one, ultra vase, vase, vase. We've got, this would be from here to A, five, six, seven, A. Okay. And then if I do that, I could grab the fifth while I'm at it. I could grab the fifth pretty easily. So one, one, five, eleven. One, five, eleven. And I can mute that one. That's clearly doable. could put the three back here and then the 11 that is not as doable Ow, it hurt my wrist don't try that at home I'm a professional okay all right you could try it but just don't sue me if you hurt your wrist I'm gonna go to the C now let's go to this C <clears throat> Where's the C? Where are you? A, B, C. Right there. All right, let's try this one. Let's try it. I'm getting tired. All right. I'm not sure I'm even getting this anymore. I'm just like going through the motions. All right, sometimes you just have to go through the motions. That's okay. So I have to go. We're going to say this is going to be... <laughs> This is going to be a five note away, perfect fourth. 12 minus five is seven. So I need to find seven note distance. So this would be five, negative five, six, seven. So here, that would be a seven note away, perfect uh, fifth. Inverse, five note away, perfect fourth. Otherwise known as pi, five note away, 11. And then I have a three right underneath it because of the kink in the tuning. So we've got that going for us. I've got that going for me, which is nice. But the Dalai Lama said on my deathbed, I would find enlightenment. That said, so I've got that going for me. Said, hey. Lama, how about a little something, you know, for the effort? Well, there won't be any tip, but on your deathbed, okay. Let's go to the next one up. No one even knows what you're talking about. Referring to movies from like the f 20s or something, might as well be for crying out. It's ridiculous. This is going to be 5, 10, nine, eight, that's uh, not the right one, seven. All right, so if I went from this C 
to this F, that would be a, uh, that would be going from the top to bottom, would be a, be a five note away, a uh, seven note away, perfect fifth. Therefore, from bottom to top, five note away, perfect fourth. All right, I'm going to stop there. I know it's early. I should keep, but I've been trying to work, just do rhythm. I've been messing with just the rhythm.